Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching using the vSphere 5 web client. In this lesson, I'll start off with an overview of the vSphere 5 web client. I'll show you how to install the server portion of the web client, how to authorize the web client server, and then I'll show you how to use the new vSphere 5 web client. So with that, let's get started. New in vSphere 5 is a web-based version of the vSphere client. This new web-based vSphere administrative interface is built using Adobe Flex, and if you've used the latest version of the VMWareView administration tools, you may have seen a very similar Adobe Flex-based interface. This new web client is the future of vSphere administration. In fact, in the next version of vSphere, VMware has already hinted that they'll be discontinuing the vSphere client currently running in Windows that's built using the C-sharp language. The new web-based interface offers a very nice recent task pane and work in progress pane on the right hand side that I'll be showing you in just a little bit once we get the web-based client installed. This new web client requires either Microsoft Internet Explorer 7 or 8 or Mozilla Firefox version 3.5 or 3.6. It also requires that you install Adobe Flash Player version 10.1.0 or later on the same system or the same operating system as your web browser. In fact, I'll be showing you how we'll be required to authorize our vSphere web client server, which I typically install on the vCenter server, and how we'll even need to have Adobe Flash on that system which could be the vCenter server, in order to perform that authorization. Of course, you can take the URL and perform the authorization on another operating system if you really don't want to install Adobe Flash on your vCenter server. With this initial release of the vSphere 5 web client, the biggest limitation is that no vSphere client plugins will work with the web client. I'm sure this is something they'll be resolving in the future, but as you know, those vSphere client plugins provide a ton of functionality not only for third-party products but also for VMware products. So you'll need to keep in mind that you'll still need the traditional Windows vSphere client to use any functionality provided by a plugin. Now the new web client is not required by or even really related to the new vCenter server virtual appliance. That's the Linux-based vCenter appliance that you can download and install without having to create a new virtual machine for vCenter or even purchase a Windows Server operating system license. However, you cannot install the web client server portion directly on the vCenter server virtual appliance, so you would have to install that on another Windows server in your virtual infrastructure. Something interesting to note is that the new web client server portion is required to view the VRAM pooled pricing utilization report that you'll find in the regular vSphere client. However, that same report is not yet available in the vSphere 5 web client. Installation of the vSphere client server portion is done directly from the vCenter server media and you can actually install it on any system that meets the requirements but I typically put it on the Windows vCenter server. So without further delay let's go over to the console of my vCenter server virtual machine where I've already mounted the vCenter server media which contains the vSphere web client server portion. I'll show you how to install that how to authorize that vCenter web client server portion with the vCenter server, and then I'll show you from my local web browser how to use the vSphere 5 web client. Here I am in my traditional Windows-based vSphere client, and I'm just going to right-click on my vCenter Windows-based server and go ahead and open the console for that virtual machine. And then on the vCenter server virtual machine, if I go up to the CD drive up here, and then down to ISO image, and then because I connected the vCenter 5 DVD image to this vCenter virtual machine, we get this auto run menu that pops up here, and if you look on the menu, notice the third option down here is the vSphere web client server. So it's the server portion that actually makes the vSphere 5 web client possible. You don't have to install anything on each of the workstations where you want to run the web client, unlike the Windows client, but you do have to have this web client server piece running either on the vCenter server or on another Windows server in your virtual infrastructure. So I'm going to click on the vSphere web client server piece and start that installation. After taking a couple of quick defaults in the vSphere 5 web client installation, such as typing in my name and accepting the license agreement, this very quick installation is completed. From here I can just click finish. 
and then that automatically opens up our default web browser here on the vCenter server where I installed the vSphere web client. And you can actually take this URL up here in the address bar if you wanted to and perform the authorization I'm about to show you on your local web browser, of course replacing the word localhost with the name of your vCenter server. In my case, I've already installed actually Adobe Flash on this vCenter server so that I can access the vSphere web client authorization interface uh, directly from here. So all I have to do here is go down and click continue to this website. And this brings up the new vSphere web client administration tool. Notice here it says that currently the vSphere web client is not ready to use as there are no vCenter server systems registered with this vSphere web client. What we need to do to get the vSphere web client working is we need to perform this registration. To do that, just click register a vCenter server right here. And this brings up this dialog box here. So what I need to do here is to enter my vCenter server URL, which is just going to be http colon slash slash vCenter5 dot wiredbraincoffee.com. I'll type in the usual administrative username and password that I use to access that vCenter server. And then down here, just make sure uh, that this says vCenter 5 and not localhost. And you also may want to write down or copy and paste this URL here, because this is going to be the URL that you'll be using to access your new vSphere web client interface. This is what you could actually type in over on your local computer to access the new vSphere 5 web client. So at this point, I'll just click register. And there we go. We can see that we are indeed registered. And notice up here, we still have the URL. It says HTTPS colon slash slash vCenter 5 colon 9443 slash vSphere dash client. So that's what we'll actually type in on our local computer to access the vSphere web client. And also notice that the little warning message up here is gone now that we performed our first initial registration. All right, so at this point, with the vSphere 5 web client authorized, we can now go to our local computer and go to this URL. Now here I am on my local computer, and I brought up a new Firefox web browser interface, and I'm just going to type in HTTPS colon slash slash vCenter 5 colon 9443 slash vSphere dash client. I'll press enter on that. And I already have Adobe Flash installed on this local computer and it's integrated with this web browser. Now I'm above the minimum requirements here of uh, Firefox 3.5 or 3.6. I'm actually running Firefox 4. But this is what the login screen looks like for the VMware vSphere web client. Notice the server URL right there. And then here's where we would type in our username and password just like you would with a traditional Windows based vSphere client. I'll press enter there to log in. And here we go, this is it. This is the vSphere 5 web client. Let me maximize this window so we can go full screen and you can get the full effect here. So first off, you'll notice that it looks very similar to the vSphere client over in Windows. On the left hand side here, by default, you're in your vSphere host and clusters inventory. So I've got my vCenter server here at the top. I've got my data centers. Underneath that, I've got my HADRS cluster. And then in that cluster, of course, I've already added my ESXi servers and my virtual machines. So that part is very similar. I can click on any of those servers. And then, of course, here in the middle pane, I've got the traditional summary tab with information about the server. It says its status is normal. ESXi version 5.0. vMotion is enabled. We can scroll over here to the right and get information about the physical server hardware, CPU and memory uh, utilization, networking and storage information is all available right here from the summary tab. Moving on from the summary tab, you can go to the monitor tab here where you can review task information and a task status. If we scroll over here to the right, uh, start time and complete time, if I click on one of these tasks here, you see information about it down here uh, in the bottom pane. I can also go to events, 
where I can filter through events and I can even sort events by the type of event. There's uh, info events all the way down to error events. You've got performance charts and alarms. Currently no alarms are triggered. Let's go into the virtual machine tab. Here you can see the status of your virtual machines. And you can even right click on those virtual machines and then go in to power on those virtual machines, configure the virtual machines, migrate, convert, clone, rename, remove, or delete the virtual machines, or even take snapshots or bring up the snapshot manager. From here, let's go into the networks tab. And here in the networks tab, you can see status about uh, different virtual networks running on that ESXi server. If we go into storage, you can see information about the different data stores that this host can access. And I can even right click on those data stores and register a virtual machine from the data store or create a brand new virtual machine on that data store. Up here on the top, you notice I can opt to create a new virtual machine, a new resource pool, a new vApp, and even perform configuration on the host such as entering maintenance mode. If we go to a virtual machine in the virtual infrastructure, we get the same type of summary information that you would see in the summary tab of the Windows-based vSphere client. Information about the state of the virtual machine, guest operating system, IP address, DNS server, VMware tools information, and then on the right-hand side here, information about the virtual hardware configured for that virtual machine. Back here to the left, I can even opt to launch the console for that virtual machine. Which brings up a fully functional virtual machine console directly inside my web browser. Back here in the vSphere client, notice on the left hand side here, uh, besides the hosts and clusters tab, I've also got virtual machines and templates. I've got data stores as well as networking. All the traditional inventory areas are represented here on the left hand side. I can also choose to collapse or expand that left side of the screen if I want to, to give me extra real estate in the vSphere web client. On the right hand side of the screen here, I really like this uh, recent task drop down, the work in progress, and the alarm information. Of course, I can choose to collapse or expand this as well. Notice when I collapse it, how I've got uh, little notes here that represent each of the different uh, tasks, work in progress, or alarms. So if I do collapse it, I can still see if new work in progress, task, or alarms appear on the right hand side. Speaking of the work in progress, let me show you how that works. Let's say that I decide to perform a uh, configuration edit on this open filer virtual machine. I'll click on the virtual machine and then I'll go up here to the configuration drop down. I'll go into edit settings. I can go down to new device and then let's say that I add a new CD DVD drive. I'll click add there. We can see the new device has been added but I haven't yet clicked OK. And let's say, uh oh, someone walked in and uh, they have a question for me. I need to check the status of a virtual machine for them. But I'm in the middle of this configuration. I'm not sure if this is how I want to leave it. What I can do is I can go up here and I can click on this minimize and finish this work later. So all I have to do is click that right double arrow. And then notice this new entry here in the work in progress window. So I've got this work in progress, but now I can go over and I can check on the status of another virtual machine. Maybe I need to power off that virtual machine or restart it, uh, launch the console, whatever it might be. Then later I can come back and I can click on my work in progress here. And there we go. That brings up the window I was in before. I can click OK. And now I've just uh, created a new task. Notice the task is reconfiguring the virtual machine. It completed very quickly and then we can see we've got a check mark there that shows us that that reconfiguration task was successful. So that's how the work in progress window works. I think it's a really cool feature and it's something that the traditional Windows based vSphere client didn't offer. Now besides configuring hosts, virtual machines, templates, storage and networking from this view, notice this little drop down menu up here. If I click on this down arrow, notice I can go into vCenter management, search, monitoring or system administration. If I go into system administration and click on plugin management, Notice that I do have a plugin on this list, so I can actually view the plugins that are installed with my vCenter server. Unfortunately, I cannot install new plugins and use those with the vSphere 5 web-based client. Like I said earlier, that's the biggest limitation that I see 
with this new web-based client. And I'm sure that that's something they'll be resolving in future releases. Back up to the drop-down triangle up here. Going back to vCenter Server Management, that'll take us back where we were. Something else we can do here is to go into Monitoring. So let's go to the Events Console. And here you get a much larger Events Console than what you saw before. Notice how you can filter, you can sort, and then you can even export directly from this console. Another drop-down that you should be aware of is the Administrator drop-down up here. And actually, this is just your login name. If you were logged in as David or Bob, it would say David or Bob right there. And then this is where you would log out for security purposes so that you don't leave the vSphere client up and running in your web browser all the time. You know, perhaps someone else could walk up and actually uh, start administering the virtual infrastructure if you didn't lock uh, your desktop. Something else you can do is you can get help right here. There's a very nice uh, help interface. If we go into the table of contents, it brings up a new window. And then here we can search through the table of contents or the index or even do searches related to the new vSphere web client. There's a lot of information in here. And then we can also go directly to the VMware Documentation Center uh, right from this link. If we close out this tab and go back to the vSphere web client, uh, something else you can do is uh, perform searches right up here from the uh, top right hand search box. So let's say I type in vCenter and press enter. It tells me that it found a virtual machine named vCenter or I can just click on all results. And it shows me all the results that it found that contained the word vCenter. I can even go here and I can perform advanced searches just like I can do over in the Windows based vSphere client. Now we're back here in the vCenter management view showing our host and virtual machines inventory and that really brings me to the end of my demonstration of what the vSphere 5 web client can do for you. I have to be honest, I've really enjoyed using the new vSphere web client. It's quick, it's snappy, it's very visually appealing. I think this web-based client will be very useful for day-to-day -day administration and I look forward to seeing what VMware is going to do with it in the future. So with that, let's go back to our slides. And that brings us to the summary for this lesson. I started off by talking about the new vSphere 5 web client and providing you an overview on what it does and what it does not do. It has some cool new features. I mean, of course, you can access uh, vSphere 5 and administer your virtual infrastructure wherever you can access a web browser that can access your vCenter server, which is probably going to be where you're running the vSphere 5 web client server piece. What it doesn't do is allow you to use your traditional vSphere client plugins, which may or may not be a big problem for you. From there, I showed you how to install the vSphere 5 web client server piece. I installed it directly on my vCenter 5 server, and then I showed you how to authorize that web client server to work with the vCenter server, which would allow you to actually use the vSphere 5 web client from your web interface. And then I ended the lesson by providing you an overview of how the vSphere 5 client can help you to administer your vSphere 5 virtual infrastructure. Thanks for watching.